Hello everyone, my name is Lauren Odom, a librarian at the African American Research Library and Cultural Center. We are super excited to share this Arlecon 2020 short with you. It brings to life one of the graphic novels of the late Congressman John Lewis. Lewis wrote a series of graphic novels to inspire youth to read. Today, we honor his life by bringing this production to you. Enjoy it, and welcome to Arlecon 2020. To many of us, he was a civil rights icon. But John Lewis was even more than this. He was an author and communicator who had a passion for making sure his works were accessible to all. Particularly, he had an interest in reaching young people who weren't avid readers. The general idea of a graphic novel is to make reading less of a chore and more of a pleasant experience that include visuals and small chunks of information. In this video, we have the pleasure of reliving a part of book one in John Lewis's series of graphic novels, March, a collaborated work created out of his civil rights marching experience. After speaking much about his growing up on the farm outside of Troy, Alabama, and having been charged with the responsibility of taking care of the chickens on his family's farm. Lewis describes his first brush with public speaking in his first novel. He recalls the first sermon he preached as a young boy. So five days before my 16th birthday, I preached my first sermon, A Praying Mother, from the first book of Samuel. I was nervous, but once I warmed up, the congregation warmed up too. Amen. And outpoured the emotions. Praise the Lord. After hearing one of my sermons, the Montgomery advertiser asked to take my picture for an article. That was the first time I ever seen my name in print. One of Lewis's turning point in his journey was meeting Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He was at a crossroad as to what to do after high school, knowing now that he had a gift for preaching and public speaking. He wanted to meet Dr. King after not hearing back from his transfer student application to Troy State. Lewis recalls his parents' regular warnings to him, his father's words to stay out of trouble, and his mother's words to don't get in white people's way. Having decided to join the peaceful protest movement and to embrace the ways of nonviolence preached by Mahatma Gandhi, Lewis illustrates in his novel how the movement grew and found trouble. March 28, 1958, I was attending the First Baptist Church in downtown Nashville. You could literally stand on the steps, throw a baseball, and then hit the steps of the Tennessee State Capitol. The congregation, led by Kelly Miller Smith, were black Baptists who'd left the white church because they had been forced to worship in a balcony. I was one of the first volunteers to attend. It wasn't a very large meeting, but I was the only student to go from my little school. Shortly after that meeting, the group would be engaged with the sit-ins at various lunch counters following similar sit-ins in Nashville, Greensboro, Raleigh, and Durham, North Carolina. The graphic novel was effectively used by Lewis and his collaborators to make the point that Blacks were abused, humiliated, and threatened across the board. November 28, 1959, we started with test sit-ins to test the local store's policy, establishing that they would not serve interracial or all-black groups. Our plan was simple. Enter a store, ask to be served, and if or when we were refused, we would leave. I was nervous. We all were nervous. We each purchased something, establishing us as legitimate paying customers and then we sat down at the lunch counter for a bite to eat. 
I'm sorry, we can't serve you here. May we speak to the manager? Part of our discipline was that only one person spoke for the group in an action. On this day, we designated Diane. I'm the manager. Look, it's store policy not to serve colored people here. What about the white student? Can they be served? No, I'm sorry. They're with you, so we can't serve them either. No harsh words, no violence, no one paid much attention as we left. Lewis and his collaborators made a point of posting a sheet handed out to each of the lunch counter sit-in participants. But Lewis had a cheeky and humorous side to his graphic novel writing. He opens the book with a famous scene in his life's history, the crossing of the Edmund Pettus Bridge to Selma, Alabama. Here, Lewis shows how in the face of great opposition from state police, he sees humanity and describes a conversation between himself and a fellow marcher. Can you swim? No. Well, neither can I, but we might have to. The scene goes on to recount the events that would later become known as Bloody Sunday, when many of the marchers were beaten and tear gassed by the state troopers of Alabama. Wow. You were just treated to some of the pages in John Lewis's graphic novel, March, book one available right here in the Youth Services section at our library. The ebook version of the book can be downloaded via our free online resource, Hoopla, at broward.org slash library. At Arlick, we strive to bring the African-American experience to community members and patrons of Broward County Libraries. So thanks again for watching and enjoy the rest of Arlicon. <laughs>